Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. While we wait for the announcement of GTA 6, or if you're watching this late, are celebrating the fact that the GTA 6 countdown has begun, it's time to look back upon ourselves and reminisce about the things we most likely have all done at least once in GTA Online. From fun things that we ticked off our GTA bucket list to things that we'd rather not talk about. This is my unofficial list of 8 things that we've all done in GTA Online, with a part 2 if you end up enjoying this. Show your love by liking and subscribing. Let us start off this list with something that we can all relate to. Now I admit, even as a GTA related YouTuber with thousands of viewers and followers, even I can struggle to put together a reliable team of enthusiastic gamer gals to tag along in my never ending quest to get money to spend on stuff that I'll use like once or twice. And like everyone else, I too have had the realisation that hooking up with randoms can lead to a bad time. They can also happen to be really bad at doing heists most of the time. Either that, or they are just wanting to troll and or waste other people's time. Now instead of trying to brute force your way through heists, I think the best advice that I could give to you would be to play some normal missions at first. Meet some people who excel at the game like they drive fast and can make their way out of a shootout with confidence, add them as friends and build a portfolio of people that you can rely on. And that leads me on to... Although it may be annoying to find that you have a noob on your team, you do have to remind yourself that you too were once a useless moldable canvas of a noob who had yet to prove themselves in an ever so mature world of GTA Online. One who had to endure the beatings akin to that of a lower class family child to then transcend into the upper echelon of gamer to become what you are today. So perhaps it's not wise to mock those who are new, but rather guide them in the right direction to walk the path of chatness by beating their senses in! So what do we do when we complete heists and get loads of money? We use the cash to buy stupid things, that's what we do. From MC business building locations stuck in the middle of nowhere, making them about as useful as a chocolate teapot, to vehicles that travel slower than an 80 year old chain smoker. I too have made really bad purchase decisions in GTA Online, but to be fair, that is kind of what I do as a GTA YouTuber. I buy all of the crap stuff, tell you guys not to buy it, so that you don't repeat the mistake. <laughs> Now I'm sure most of you can relate, regardless of how good or bad a vehicle is, we all have that one special car that we keep in the good garage. You know, the one that isn't filled to the brim with the trash cars or the bicycles that you never use. Or have it on hand so that you can show it off to the nearest player that you meet, only for it to get blown up by said player, and then you have to go on a death march, killing them over and over again in retaliation, using said car to rub it in. I mean, I have the Chromobiles, some of the PRG Discord staff members favour the likes of the Comet series of cars. One of the members of staff particularly likes the MTL Dune, Zephyr. We all have our favourite vehicle that will bend over backwards to make the most use of, regardless of how compromising it may be to your safety or how underperforming it may be in a race. Bonus points if a car is actually viable for use in terms of practicality. I particularly favour the civilian version of the Insurgent, which in comparison to the Pickup Custom is a bit slower and doesn't have the machine gun on top, but the civilian version is still pretty darn useful and it makes it more than worth it in the long run, because the Insurgent is just so damn sexy. Though one car in particular that I have taken a liking to as of late, and I see it quite a lot from other players too, is the Virtue. This car is fast! Like holy hell, this thing is fast. It has great handling, it's great for pulling off drifts, it has Imani tech. So the likelihood of getting a blowjob from an oppressor noob is low, and the thing is just overall insanely good. I mean, the only thing I don't like about the car is it's electric, but I mean, this car is just insane otherwise. Speaking of tryhards. 
We all like to complain and shame those of us who go around blowing other players using an overpowered jet or a hover cycle. But let's be honest, folks. We all have done it. Don't lie to me. You've been there. I saw you in your little death laser shooter blowing up car meets and shooting that one guy who doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell to survive. We all been there at least once, I know it, don't lie to me. There's a good and bad side to all of us after all, a good and evil, a yin and yang, an angel and a devil on each one's shoulders. And depending on the kind of person you are, you either keep on doing it because your parents never loved you, or you quickly get tired of doing it because you're someone who has integrity. But for those who maybe like to be evil just a little tiny bit at times, we have... <coughs> So as part of the contract update, players were finally given a stun gun to use in GTA Online, but rather the more nerfed version that is more suitable for use in the online portion of the game with a much, much longer cooldown for every shot. And although it does have a long cooldown, it doesn't really make it impossible to grab two or three people with a stun gun and torture a piggy in the middle because that shit's hilarious. Now whether you are the submissive one in the middle or one of the people keeping them pinned down, I'm sure most if not all of us have had a run in with the casual fun time that can be had with the taser gun. Speaking of torture. Let us talk about those times where we would get stuck in parts of the map which is just in the middle of nowhere. Primarily the hill. They feature absolutely nothing at all like any roads, buildings or services that we can make use of to get out of there. Now you may have found yourself stuck in these bland, boring and useless parts of the map, either by crashing a plane or you were out there driving in a car and the car got fatally wounded and the engine died or whatever. You're stuck out there with nothing but inconveniently steep hills surrounding you. You question how you'll make it back home to your multi-million dollar office or a road in which you can steal a car to get back to civilization, and you're not aware of any bugs or exploits that you can use to teleport out of there, unless you have to embark on a long journey which in your mind feels like many hours have passed and you're gonna pass away because of your lack of food and water, even though that's not a thing in the game. Oh, I've been there before, and I'm sure a lot of you have too. It gets even worse if you have a mad tryhard trying to farm kills off of you because of course there's always a FUCKING TRYHARD! And now for the opposite, the Maze Bank. It's the tallest building in the game, but it also has a very handy helipad on top which we have all tried to park something on top of. Not just helicopters, I'm talking jets, rocket cars, motorcycles, friggin BMXs, we've all done it. We've parked stupid ass vehicles on top of the Maze Bank, made a post of it on social media. Well unfortunately for all of you, me and my team managed to be the world's first to park a goddamn submarine on May's bank, which is something that no one else can match. I mean, huh, are, you, are you suggesting you can beat us in the competition of parking on top of May's bank? Ha! Huh, keep dreaming, loser! And there we have it, folks. Things that we have all done at least once in GTA Online. Let us know in the comments of anything that you think that everyone has done at least once in GTA Online, and I'll possibly make it into a part two. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit notifications, and join the Discord channel to rub shoulders with myself, as well as other GTA fans. And I'll see you around, folks.